Charlie, you have taken the position as a dualist, as someone who believes in dualistic interactionism, and you have called dualism an empirical science. Why is that? The place you start on all this is the very common sense observation that what goes on inside our minds seems to be somehow different from the solid stuff that happens out here. From that point, things get very complicated. Okay, so for instance, Des people usually talk about the philosopher Descartes when they talk about dualism, and Descartes defined mind as totally different from material stuff, and then everybody worries about how they can interact. Well, of course, they were defined as non-interacting. So, you know, the mind just ties itself up in knots on that particular one. I'm a pragmatic dualist, okay? And I emphasize the pragmatic because it's not a philosophical position so much as an attempt to deal with, with actual events that you can observe. The mind in parapsychological experiments is asked to do things that we don't know how to make matter do, to send a telepathic message, to, to clairvoyantly describe something at a distance or to heal someone when there's no physical intervention. And sometimes it works. It works often enough that you know that it happens. You know, if, even after you filter out all the noise of unsuccessful experiments and imagination, sometimes the mind can do this. Okay, well, the mind is obviously interacting with the material. My take on what's going on is that actually clairvoyance and psychokinesis knowing the state of physical matter, the clairvoyance, and psychokinesis affecting physical matter by mental intention alone are actually used normally all the time, but they're used for what we might call internal communications. The senses, the physical senses, which are generally the most important information you can deal with because it tells you what's happening around your physical body, all feed into the physical brain. The mind can pick that up by some kind of inner clairvoyance to read the state of the brain, and that keeps the mind in forms of what the brain is doing. And then it influences it by psychokinesis. It picks up the results by clairvoyance and so forth. I think this is the normal, the everyday use of this. And it's the abnormal, the relatively unusual use of clairvoyance to go outside the body to something totally different in the physical world or the like that even tells us that clairvoyance and psychokinesis exist. So you are really taking a radically different approach to the mind-body problem than are traditionally done by philosophers or even theologians and certainly by scientists. Right, yes. Philosophers usually say if, if mind and matter are different, what's the mechanism for interaction? Well, these parapsychological effects are the mechanism for interaction. Uh, this is what experience and the data force me to think. You know, again, it's not some absolute philosophical position. I don't know what the ultimate nature of reality is, but it makes the best sense out of what I see happening. From my perspective, a philosophy of the nature of mind that doesn't take parapsychological data into account is woefully inadequate. It's leaving out a whole important section of reality.